hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to the first video of the inheritance chapter. Well, in doing this video, we'll cover the first top point, which says outline the experiments carried out by Gregor Mendel. So for this top point, all we have to do is we have to outline, which means we have to give the basic features, so the basic features of the experiment done by Gregor Mendel. So we also have to go over who Gregor Mendel was. And this here was Gregor Mendel. He lived in the 1850s. He was born in the 1820s and died in the 1880s. But he lived in the 1850s, and that's also when he conducted his experiment. So his experiment started in 1856. Now he actually tested how inheritance works. And inheritance is just how you pass your traits from your mother or father to your child. And when he lived in the 1850s, people believed in the idea of blending. What blending was, was that people believed that, for example, if this were the mother plant and this were the father plant, that the actual offspring would have the traits of the mother and the father, but they'd be blended in between the two, so there would be a blending. So what I mean by that is that the actual child would have features of the father and the mother. So for example, this would have a pretty big leaf here, a very small leaf, and the actual child would have like middle-sized leaves in between the two. So it blended. It's a blend between mother and father. Now that was the belief back then in the 1850s, and Gregor Mendel wanted to test that. He wanted to see how variation works. And we know variation is just that every living thing is a bit different. So for example, we know that you know, there might be some pink flowers, there might be some darker pink flowers, we know there might be narrow or wide flowers, all that's possible, so variation existed. And Gregor Mendel wanted to figure out why does it exist, so what is the mechanism behind this variation. That was his experiment he conducted. I'll go over the experiment now. So what he did is a couple of steps. First, what he did, he he actually looked at lots of different things. So he looked at different traits, and the traits he looked at were from pea plants. So plants that produced peas. And the traits he looked at were these ones. He looked at he round. So some plants had round actual peas, whereas the other plants had wrinkled ones. And he also looked at yellow versus green. He looked at pink flowers versus white flowers. He looked at normal inflated pods versus constricted pods. He looked at green pods versus yellow pods. And also done experiments such as having a short pea plant versus a long pea plant. Now he made sure whenever he actually conducted the experiment, he control had a controlled variable. And what that means is only really he only examined one certain variation. So for example, in this experiment that I'm going to go over here, he just focused on the yellow versus the, the actual green pea. What I mean by that is you can imagine these are his actual pea plants, and he would have had lots of them. So you might have had hundreds of each, 100 times this one, and 100 times this one. And what he made sure, so the first step says pure red plants, or so red pure plants, that only has one specific trait. So he bred these pure plants, these pure breads, these pure breads, and the difference between them was only one trait. So for example, it had the same pods, where it keeps its beans, same pods, same flowers for both the, the actual plants, and everything else was the same as well, except for one difference, was the color of the peas. So if you looked inside the actual pods, you would have seen for this flower, it would have had yellow pods. All of its actual uh, peas were yellow, sorry, not its pods. Whereas for the other flower, all of its actual peas were green. That was the only difference. Everything else was kept the same. And it took him two years. So he, for two years, he made sure to separate these two different types of, of breeds to make sure that it was pure. To make sure he had one set of flowers which all created yellow ones and the other set which all created green ones. And then what he did, so this was the first step, he made sure he had ones which only produced yellow and the other ones which only produced green. So the pures, these were the pure ones. And what he did then, he actually crossed, this was the, we could say cross, he crossed the pure piece. So he crossed one of the yellow ones, he crossed the yellow piece with the green piece. And what happened, he created a 
mono hybrid cross and what I mean by that is mono means one mono means one and hybrid it means that it's a, it's a hybrid it's not pure and it's a hybrid between one different type of trade so mono means one so one trade is different in this example he only examined yellow versus green and it's a hybrid because the new one so the F1 generation F1 generation means that it's the first generation after the parent generation. So this was the P1 generation, the parent generation. And this was the F1 generation, the new generation. And the actual interesting fact was all the F1 generations were green. So they were green, even though we had one yellow one. We had some yellow um, plants being crossbred with green plants. All the actual F1 generations, so the offspring generation, the first offspring generation, were all green. And that kind of hints at some type of dominance, right? So a dominance behavior, in this case, green over yellow. And remember that what was the prevailing idea behind it at the time? It was a blending idea. So blending would mean that if you cross these two together, there'd be a somewhere in between those two and the color would have been you know, this kind of green, like a lighter green between green and, and yellow. But this didn't happen. But what actually happened was it was pure green like the actual parent here, which suggests this one has a trait which was somehow dominant over this one. This one would have been somehow recessive. And those were the terms he used as well to describe the behavior. But this F1 generation, what he did next, so this, the first step was to cross the, the breed, the pure breeds, and he produces F1 generation. And then what he did, he actually crossed the F1 generation. So now he crossed the F1 generation. Remember, these were the mono hybrids. So this one had these were the hybrids from the pure breeds, and he crossed them. And then he found something even more interesting. He found that we had a ratio. So for every three green ones that were produced, there was one yellow one. That ratio, one to three. Now the yellow one in the F1 generation, when he crossed the first cross, was completely gone. There was no yellow one at all. It was lost. But for whatever reason, in the F2 generation, the yellow one reappeared, even though there was less of it. For every one yellow, there was three green. But overall, it reappeared. And Gregor Mendel had an idea of why that might have occurred. He, this obviously occurred because of genes. They didn't have, they didn't know about genes back then, but it occurred because of genes. But he had a, like a guess, he didn't know exactly what it was. He called them the factors. So he called them the factors that contributed to this, this yellow one reappearing. But he wasn't exactly sure what it is, but he definitely did. Genes, no one knew about genes back then. But the whole idea of the experiment blew that idea of blending out the window because the experiment showed that blending wasn't happening. So I'll quickly go over again what he did. He had first, for, for two years, he made sure he had pure breeds. So he kept self-pollinating, crossing between the pure breeds. So the, the, always the green ones um, bred with the green ones and the yellow ones bred the yellow ones. And over time, they had his pure ones, which only produced yellow ones, the other ones only produced green ones. Then he crossed the green and the yellow together, the pure breeds, and he created his F1 generation, which were all green. They were not blended, they were all green. What he did then, he crossed the F1 generation with each other, and he got something really strange. He got one yellow for every three green. And that suggests that there was something called a gene, which he didn't know about back then, and we now know about now. But I'm going to go over exactly how this happened in the next video. But for this, just know the experiment he'd done. Like in terms of the layout that I just described, that's important for this dot point. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.